Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame Paradise and Carta. Paradise, it's just another day for you and me in paradise. And then you got another one. Two tickets to paradise, yeah. Grab your bags, we leave tonight. <clears throat> Eddie Money, man. Yes. Or Eddie Munson, perhaps. No. No, no, no. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so, um, how you feeling there, uh, Sesame? Uh, overall, I don't know. I'm at like a five. Eh, I guess I'd be like a seven energy-wise. A five mental health-wise. <laughs> Maybe. Did watching Dr. Paradise help your mental or physical health in any way whatsoever? No, it it ticked it, it ticked it down pretty significantly in both ways, actually. Um I was probably at a two <clears throat> mental health wise and maybe a four uh energy wise both during and after watching uh the episode. Okay. I was just checking because I was wondering if I should prescribe this to our listeners to help with their mental health or their physical health <clears throat> no the only thing i would say is like if a person's like experiencing like mania maybe this will take it down a little bit but um i'm not a doctor so i you know i can't say but no, no. i'm not either <clears throat> I, I have played one in a movie before but yeah um so that means i can say whatever i want right i mean that's 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 the rules i could guess yeah so um just yeah, just just whatever you know. Um, do it. Okay. So what I'm gonna prescribe is that you don't watch this, <laughs> and instead just go for a walk. Yeah. Yep. It's not good. Or uh, you know, take those. What are those things called? They're um, nails. You know those those like like steel nails. Mm-hmm. And uh, you take one of those. You put it right on top of your middle finger. On top of a table. Like, put your middle finger on a table. Put that nail right on top of it. And then hit it really hard with a hammer. For, like, a half hour. Yeah. That'd be more enjoyable than watching this show. Yeah. And it would also, um... Help with the frustration if you already had watched the show. And now you're just super irritable. And, you know... It helped you, you know, uh... get. Let off some steam, you know. Well, not let off some steam. You're literally calling yeah. the nail. But, like, you know. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, the show's bad. We we made the point. Um, yeah, and I watched <clears throat> it twice. Oh, my God, really? I tried to watch it twice. Yeah, I, I watched it twice. Tired. A couple days ago, though, so I don't really That's remember bad. watching um, it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's quite possibly one of the worst shows I've ever watched in my entire life. Me too. Um, um, so this was an unaired pilot. I mean, it did air on CBS as part of their like summer um, playhouse series where they would like basically air pilots that they knew they weren't going to pick up for television series. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, they, in the middle of the summer, it, it aired on July 12th in 1988. Um, it was uh, written by Ron Zimmerman and directed by Peter Baldwin. And starred Frank Langella, who's been in a little bit of trouble lately. Oh, really? Yeah, he was just fired from um, the House of Usher um, miniseries that Netflix is producing. Mm. Uh, fall, the Fall of the House of Usher or whatever. He, uh, uh, based on the Poe story, um, he uh, supposedly told some off-color jokes was calling his co-star baby or honey or something and touched her in a sex scene on her leg and that wasn't choreographed. Oh, wow. So, the guy's like in his 80s. Um, Not that I'm giving that as an excuse, but he said he's never experienced... Yeah, it was just... He couldn't even... They wouldn't even let him apologize. So... Oh, wow. <clears throat> so is this the guy that plays a doctor? Yes, yeah, this? this is the guy that plays Dr. Paradise. Which is interesting, because in this episode, he also slapped someone on the butt. So yeah. apparently, you know, <laughs> you know, um, 
I will tell you, he's a really good actor. Um, He's going to be in a future episode of our show that I'm hoping that we cover someday, Masters of the Universe, where he played Skeletor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, he played Skeletor. He also um, was in Frost Nixon, where he played Nixon. Oh, okay. Um, Which is a great movie. But, yeah, um, my thing is with it, you know, Whatever his intentions were, if they, I don't think his intentions were bad, but regardless, it's probably good that he got fired from the show. I mean, in this day and age, you can't, you know, mess around with anything. I'm not defending him at all, so I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Just because I like him as an actor, I'm not defending his actions, and I wasn't there on the set, and I don't know. They, they have yet to, it, it was the woman playing his wife in the thing, and that's all the articles ever say. Hmm. They don't say her name. But they've already recast his role, and I I assume they didn't fire her, too. So I guess whenever the miniseries comes out, we'll find out who played his wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, And we also have Sa- Sally Kellerman, who was Hot Lips Houlihan in the movie MASH, not the TV series. Um, And she's playing the younger sister, from what I gathered. Yeah, I was I was kind of confused about um, about that. Yeah, yeah I know um, they, they're like they're like brother and sister, but I think she was supposed to be younger. But she's actually older in real life. Um, oh, really? She's passed away though. But um, oh, okay, yeah, but uh, she was older. We also have uh, Tommy Hinckley as Doctor Casey Hunter, who is uh, Sally Kellerman's character of Amy Hunter's uh, son. And uh, Dr. Paradise's uh, nephew. I mean, so so my, my question is, was Amy's maiden name Paradise as well? Um, I, that's, <laughs> I have no idea about yeah. the family. Um, we also have uh, Zan- Z- Xander Berkeley um, as Dr. Noah Fredericks, the uh, psychiatrist, uh-huh. um, who I'm Facebook friends with. If you happen to be listening to this, Xander, you're an awesome actor and... I'd love to have you on the show. Um, yeah, you were pretty much like the only good thing about the yeah the episode. We have uh, an actor named Hiram Caston as Dr. Philip Moore, who is kind of a like over the top like forty stand up comic sort of guy. You know, that's what he seemed like. And then like the guy with the glasses, the the no the guy with uh, the the doctor that was golfer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Hiram Cast. Uh, do- do- I mean, Dr. Philip Moore, played by Hiram Caston. And then oh, we had okay. Barry Gordon, who uh, played Newton Hobbs, who was like a uh, guy who invented the, uh, what I've always <laughs> referred to as the Groucho glasses. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Barry Gordon is probably, he's a really good actor, but also a voice actor, probably best known as being one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the 80s cartoon. Wow. Yeah, he was the voice of I don't know if it was Michelangelo or which one. I don't I don't feel like looking it up. Um so <laughs> um, Yeah, so what goes on in this episode here? <clears throat> Absolutely nothing. Um so they they possibly have like the coolest intro to a TV show I've ever seen in my life. So <clears throat> so it's like got this like kind of like stereotypical island song like Doctor Paradise, beep, 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 beep. Yeah. And then like he goes like into his you know the office or whatever, and he's like talking to people, and then he does the the skip thing, and then it freezes frame freeze frames right as he's in yeah. there when he's clicking. I call it the kick you. That's what I was about um, to say. It's the kick you. Yeah. It's the kick you for people who don't understand that reference. It's from Degrassi Junior High slash Degrassi High. There was a character named Yik You. Who would do that who was often? Best. What's that? <laughs> who would do that often? He would do it like all the time, and then so we started to call him the kick you because we yeah. thought we were clever. And then uh, anyway, and then and then so he does that. He's like, yeah, you know. And then the freeze frames, frames, bleh, freeze frames right there. Mm-hmm. And then we get into the actual episode. <clears throat> Just a boring conversation between the you know dude and his mom. You know, she's telling him, hey, why don't you? you know, get a real job instead of being a chiropractor, that whole thing, like, chiropractors aren't real doctors, you know, type of, like, 
nice little dig, you know, that they have. Well, a lot of them are quacks, but that's. Well, I know, but it's, they, <laughs> it's like the whole thing of like, yeah. you know, oh, you went to school and then learned a skill. You're a bad person for that, you know, type of thing. Like, because you're not doing what I'm doing. So, therefore, <laughs> what you do is of no value. It's that typical mentality. It's like, yeah, you know, because everyone in the world needs to be a doctor or everyone in the world needs to be a garbage truck driver because no other job exists apparently so mm-hmm. society definitely would not fall apart if everyone had the same job or you anyway, could be or, uh, or you could be just like a you know a real normal person like bill maher yeah yeah okay and then uh <laughs> that's what <clears> the guy's <throat> yeah whatever he's he's a waste of space and makes yes. millions of years basically being the the you know right-wing liberal like like you know the heck is that Oh wow, helicopter! That's going pretty low. Anyway, um, so they argue over that, and then you know he also went to the casino and I guess lost a bunch of money. By the way, Doctor Paradise actually owns the casino. Yeah, and so he lost money at said casino, but it was actually his mom's money. I guess that he's yeah. Stole. Like I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the logic here. Like so, they're they're on this like tropical island, and there's a casino there. And like one medical clinic, and Doctor Paradise owns both of them. <clears throat> he just did the skip again. What's him? What, what is what's him with those skips? Anyway, sorry, I've got it on oh. mute and right now. Anyway, he just did the skip again and went through the doors. It's like <laughs> that must be like his signature move. Yeah. So I, I, I have a think. And he walks back in. The doors just open on their own. That's yeah, like, that that I didn't get either. Magic does it anyway. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole thing where. You know, she goes off to work because she's got a patient at nine in the morning, which, you know, she acts like is some like huge like imposition. It's like it's nine, like most doctor's office <laughs> open at eight. But anyway, OK. And then um, I, I'm thinking he owns the island, perhaps, maybe yeah. as well. I don't know. And then but they they were trying to be funny and they had this whole thing where they got like a, a pet parrot and like a cat. Jumps through the window and it's talking to the cat, and then then it's just like, oh my god, it was trying to be funny. It was just so bad. I mean, it was just like there. It was like I was almost paid to watch like the cat killed a bird. Like even though I'm, I found an injured bird last week and tried to save it, and it really it was funny. Like right after, right after I watched that, I uh, I watched Mm -hmm. um, I I watched uh, Only Murders in the Building, Mm -hmm. and this season there was a talking parrot in the show but not like right. over the top like this and they do it a lot better so yeah. just <laughs> it's just it was just so ironic though that that was <clears throat> uh, yeah yeah <clears throat> so she so we have the dumb cat parrot scene and this kind of goes on throughout the whole episode they think it's like a it's funny like a running gag well, it, well, like, it goes to the beginning and the end really oh okay so, yeah. well, whatever yeah. and then uh and then she wants him to go to work for his uncle because he'll make more money doing that, but he doesn't like his uncle for obvious reasons because he's like a total arrogant, you know, rich dude. Yeah. I mean, it's like, think about it. Like, how much money does this guy need? He owns a casino, but he also has to be a doctor at the same time, probably just so that he can, like, act like he's, like, important or whatever. And then, like, probably too, so he can hit on, like, the island girl because he got, like, a stereotypical island girl. You know, as one of the characters. Yeah, like, his, uh, oh, you know, Beverly hot, Brown so, plays Hillary Dupree, his uh, receptionist. Yeah, so, so we gotta have our hot, sexy island girl who I can sexually harass and she can't do anything about it because I own this place type of thing. Basically, I'm a, I'm a colonizer who's reenacting like Christopher Columbus and like raping, you know, like all these, you know, native women. But like, you know, mm-hmm. since I'm just slapping her ass, it's okay type of, you know, mentality, you know, fucking white man bullshit. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry. And then, um, I mean, nothing else happens, really. I mean, like, so, we so, got, he comes in. Yeah, go ahead. So, so I was going to say, what we got basically going on here is we have uh, um, the psychiatrist s- sees um, Newton Hobbs, Barry Gordon's character, um, because he's all upset that um, he's made a fortune off of these uh, novelty glasses that are like the Groucho glasses because they look like his face because he has a big nose and wears glasses and has a mustache. Um, mm-hmm. And he made it as an art piece, but then it became like this novelty thing sold next to whoopee cushions and whatnot, you know? 
Mm-hmm. And so he's dealing with that, and he's also got like a lot of anxiety issues. Um, then the the mom and son go to see the psychiatrist as well because they've got like issues, and she's all upset about the fact that the last movie she saw in theaters was Myra Breckenridge. Um. <laughs> Yep. So, yeah. I had to watch Jurassic World Dominion twice in theaters recently, so I don't know if I had that. Well, anyway, so, um. The, <laughs> was, I mean, I don't even know what that movie is, so I was just totally like. I mean, my, my Herb Breckenridge is. It, it's a bad movie, but. Oh, okay. it's it's like It's like a classically campy movie that oh, okay. came out in the, like, <clears throat> 70s or something. So, um. <laughs> anyways, um. I don't even know if I've ever seen it, but I've heard. I. I've heard it referenced from time to time as being like one of the worst movies ever made. Wow. So, um, but anyways, um, we have, uh, we have them basically just trying to deal with their shit. Um, then, then, I mean, what else happens? We, we've got the later on Newton is out in the, out in the lobby and, uh, Dr. Paradise is, is mad at him because he, he won a bunch of money at the casino. And, uh... Yeah, which is weird, and then... So, so he, uh... He's basically being an asshole to, uh, Newton. And, uh, then Newton ends up pulling a gun on Dr. Paradise. Um... Yeah, that was awesome, apparently. Yeah, yeah and then, uh... Then we have, uh whole scene where they're trying to decide like in between here once in a while there's this running gag with Dr. Moore who Dr. Philip Moore who uh Dr. Paradise never remembers his name. And he like thinks it's a joke basically. Yeah. Like he thinks they're best buddies or, or yeah. at least pretends that they are and is like, oh that's another that's another good one, Doc. <laughs> I'm sure that would have been a running gag if the show got picked up for a series, you know, that would have been Yeah, and it would have been a completely annoying running yeah. gag. Another thing too that Doctor Paradise does in between all this bullshit is that he has this habit of walking through the doors that just magically open without him having to open them. Yeah, like there's just magical always... wind that opens up the doors. Yeah. So maybe he is magic. Maybe maybe that's why yeah. he owns a casino. Maybe he's just got good luck and maybe yeah. that's how he was able to buy the island. And then also run like apparently the <coughs> clinic on the island, and then have like the hot, sexy island girl as his receptionist that apparently he can just sexually harass and it's totally okay because again he owns everything. But anyway, and it's nineteen eighty eight. And I yeah, <laughs> nineteen eighty eight. In spite of all that though, he does something even more annoying, and that well not more. He does something in addition to that that's annoying, <laughs> where he has this habit. By the way, he wears a dumbass white suit. I don't trust anyone who wears white suits. That's just my own thing. Anyway, so yeah, he's, he, he's, um, he's got this whole. It's it's almost like Fantasy Island sort of looking type thing. Yeah, so, he yeah. wears this white bullshit suit. He looks like he's freaking like in um uh Miami Vice, and then he just like goes into the middle of the waiting room and just like stands there in the middle like he's like this all important dude and he's got like his hands on his hips kind of and he just like kind of looks around the room like you know like look at me i'm so important and it's just like yeah. dude you look like a fucking idiot but like okay but don't you then... do that too like in, in in your your uh your um uh medical practice you just kind of stand in the lobby all the time <laughs> I mean, I don't own a medical practice, so oh, you I don't? don't know. No, I, I'm not a doctor or anything. I don't, I don't oh, you're, you're not? <laughs> no, I never said I was a doctor, Shit. ever. I mean, I, I'm a doctor of... Oh, that's the other thing, too. Someone just looked at the Island Girl's ass in such a weird way. Like, he literally ducked his head and, like, looked at it as she walked to, like, the coffee pot area <laughs> or whatever. Like, he literally... I mean, I get it. She's hot. She's wearing a nice, tight yellow dress. We understand. Yeah. It's summer. Everyone's got their hormones going on. Okay, we get it. Calm down. Like you don't need to like actually like duck your head down like you're. You know, well, like well every time I wear that yellow dress, people look at my ass too. So. Well, I mean, you know, it's. I mean, it happens. You yeah. Know? And then, so uh, um the uh <laughs> the um, just don't wear it, just don't wear it near like any of those like Nazi rallies. They'll probably beat you up. But like, you know. Shit. I gotta stop yeah. going to you for medical advice and start listening to you for like real advice. That'd probably be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Man, I've never given you medical advice. I'm just letting <clears> that. Shit, I think I audience. must be. I must be imagining this. 
Yeah, you are, because I've never ever once given you medical advice. Just want to make that clear, because I don't want to get on the hook for any kind of oh, okay. you know, um, bad practice or malpractice. I was shooting up my it. veins with uh, pixie sticks, and I didn't know if... Uh... <clears throat> I thought that was yeah, you, I, you that told me that that would help with my ADHD. No, I never told you. I did tell you to, to inject your lungs with bleach to cure coronavirus. I know that was the president or yeah. former president. Okay, so then they come up with this idea that they're going to uh, play cards to try to save Dr. Paradise's life or decide if, uh, if the dude can shoot him. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so. as you do mm-hmm. in those type of situations, you know. Yeah, so we end up having it where everybody, you know, a couple of people try to decide to play cards, and then we end up having uh, the nephew plays cards for him to try to save his life. And then what happens? Um, they play until like two in the morning. They still haven't. Nobody is still one. And then uh, the guy's fed up. He's like, all right, I'm just going to go shoot him. But then. A uh, patient who's been waiting in there for the past 18 hours um, <laughs> or something <clears throat> who's never decided to leave the room this entire time and like people forgot about him, which is a weird doctor's office where you just forget about a patient being in a room for the entire day. Yeah. And, uh, he has a heart attack. So then Dr. Paradise and his nephew save him and then Dr. Paradise tells his nephew that like you know the reason why he's you know so hard on him and stuff for quitting you know medical school or whatever is because he's such a good surgeon and it would pretty much be a waste of his talent to just kind of throw it away or whatever so um and then uh you know the dude's wife picks him up he slaps her in the ass because yeah because that's what dr paradise does it's 1988, so apparently that was just like total fair game. And then they leave, and then, and you know, Dr. Paradise probably does this little skip thing. I'm not sure if he did or not. And then, uh, <laughs> his little skip walk or whatever you call it. Yeah. I can say, though, for a man of his age to do a skip like that, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Well, guess, well, well at the time, he, I mean, I was still, he was still, I guess he, he was in his 50s, so. Okay, yeah. but still, that's a young man's trick, or even like mm-hmm. a you know young kid's trick. So you know, you know, pretty impressive that he still got that that you know kick you kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, and we find out the psychiatrist had actually intended for uh, his patient to grab the gun, and he took out all the bullets in the clip and chamber. Oh, or whatever. He didn't take out the bullets, he took out the firing pin or something, so oh, okay. it wouldn't actually work. So, or something of yeah, that nature. The, so. And it was like a way for him to show assertiveness, which, you know, that's what my psychologist tells me all the time. He's like, Matt, like, like we're getting, you know, we need to kind of bump up your, you know, self-esteem a little bit, you know, because you know, we're making some progress, but it's not fast enough, so I'm going to need you to take this gun and, like, hold up a gas station or whatever to, like, prove to yourself that you've got, you know, self-confidence. Oh, wait, no, that's never happened once. Well, if, if they and, really um, want if they really want it to work and they want you to have, like, an ultra self-confidence, they give you a bazooka. Yeah, yeah, or an elephant gun or, you know, whatever. Um, AR-15. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, because those are, like, candy now, but, um... <laughs> And, you know, wait, no, I'm pretty sure that that would actually... Yeah, they they sell get... them next to the M&Ms, don't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she would get fired and lose her license mm-hmm. completely if she ever suggested that. But apparently not. Dr. Paradise's office, apparently anything's fair game. You can give guns to your, you know, mental health patients. You can slap the ass of random women. You can hire... Yeah. An island girl specifically for her looks, and other people can just stare at her ass every time she goes walks around. I mean, I mean to be fair, a lot of women were are have have been hired over the years just because of their looks. Not saying that it's good or bad. I'm just well, saying. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. Doctor Paradise's office has its own set of rules. Yes. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and then Doctor Paradise gets shut down because there's no more episodes after that. So apparently, he he ran into some legal troubles, perhaps from the casino that he owns, maybe. Some sexual, hey, sexual harassment charges. Um, yeah, you know, and he's kind of be faced about fifty years in prison. So you know, that's that's the end of that paradise. Not so much paradise anymore, but um, no, no it's uh, yeah, that that's that's pretty much what happens. I mean, we 
Doctor Purgatory. Is yeah. His name. <laughs> Anyways, do you do you want to take a quick break here, and we'll come back and we'll uh, talk about some like reviews or something if there are any online. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. No Outlet Live. Hey, I'm Jay Remy, host of No Outlet Live. If you're in a podcast that explore any and everything, check us out. We stream anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, or just type No Outlet Live one word in your Google search bar to find the show. Live Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. No Outlet Live, your road to boredom ends here. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Well, uh, she's not very articulate. And we are back. So, how you doing? Uh, not so great after talking about the show. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> not exactly the highlight of my week so far. Um, yeah, so we've got one user review <laughs> on wow. the Internet Movie Database, and that's it. Wow. Yeah. Um, this is... From uh, Plankton Rules. Um, they wrote this on June 9th of 2020. And they gave the show a 3 out of 10 stars. Uh, this is what they say. I didn't like the show, but I like Langella's character. Dr. Paradise is a failed television pilot that was rejected by the network, but was aired on CBS Summer Playhouse, a program that aired many failed pilots. While Dr. Paradise wasn't a great program, and I can see why it wasn't picked up, I did enjoy Franklin Jella and his awful character. The show is set at a health clinic on some tropical island. Among the doctors working there is... Dr. Paradise Langella, a nasty, self-absorbed jerk of a doctor who is competent and in love with himself. Seeing and hearing this character was fun. What was not fun was the god-awful talking parrot. (laughs) I liked listening to him less than listening to gears grinding. And the other characters were mostly forgettable. Overall, a mixed bag, but mostly a crappy one due to broad writing and that fucking bird. (laughs) They didn't actually put fucking, they just put a bunch of like random things, but I decided to make their cursing say fucking. So, (laughs) right. (laughs) So yeah, got that. And we also have, There's uh, mostly negative things on YouTube as well, basically saying it's one of them is it, it, it's uh, from Preacher 1138. It's a shame it didn't get picked up. This was an interesting show. Uh, yeah. Really? Oh, and, and I guess it was Donatello is who uh, the one actor played on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. He says this is the untold story where Donatello went crazy and pointed a gun at Skeletor. <laughs> yeah that's great um <laughs> yeah so do you have any other th- thoughts on this god not really um i mean this is one of those shows that was so bad that it wasn't even fun to make fun of no um <laughs> like some sometimes we get this you know we strike gold you know yeah. and then it's just so bad that we. It's just like so fun. This is this definitely is just like, one of the worst shows we've seen. It's just sad to watch, and plus too, the quality of it didn't like the video quality of the the, the rip or whatever you would yeah. call it wasn't good. so everything was kind I mean, of. It was probably blurry. somebody that recorded it back in eighty eight when it aired, and that's all we have. So yeah, probably on VHS yeah. or some mm-hmm. bullshit, and then I mean that's how most of these pilots probably well, get yeah. on YouTube anyway, and that's and YouTube doesn't even bother to take them down because it's just like. No one cares. No one watches these things anyway. So yeah. we'll just let you just, hey, I could start using some of these for some of my scenes for my, my videos because I yeah, figured, you know, away with it. <laughs> YouTube's not going to do anything. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> but, you know, yeah, just, you know, 
it had pretty much everything you would expect from like the 80s especially in like summer casual sexism you know dumb characters who think they're cool because they wear like white suits so def definitely they were probably trying to do like the miami vice kind of vibe going on but that, that actually was a good show and then um <clears throat> you know uh you got the psychiatrist character is kind of like you get it like he's a psychiatrist but he's the weird one you, you see how that's funny he he's the guy that helps with people's heads and he's got a weird head yeah get it get it get it well, it's like yeah i get it because that's been done like a million times yes even before that show came out and then another million times since that show came out by the way just saying though like he was probably like the best character in the show but um and your facebook friends with them and i'm not saying that just because you're facebook friends with them oh no i that's what i thought before you even told me that you were facebook friends with them i'm like yeah he was like the only actually good like character in the entire episode that wasn't just like completely over the top about everything i mean like he had his, he had like his quirks and stuff but he wasn't like over the top quirks whereas you got Dr. Paradise going through doors that magically opened for him because he probably, you know, got some totem from like a long time ago. And that's how he was able to get like all this good luck, which caused him to build the casino. Or he had a remote and control. By the the island. What's that? Or he had a remote control that opened the door. I don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> well, he could have had that too. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him actually to, but, to actually rig that. But, you but, know, but, like, but the show, like, the show does have everything that 1988 was 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 known for you know yeah. misogyny guns <laughs> anxiety <laughs> an, ob an obese patient making fun of anxiety and obese patients <laughs> making and, fun of obese patients <laughs> and uh <laughs> and a talking parrot, like all of 1988 had, you know? I know, totally. Like, yeah. th that was, I mean, like, literally every, and that's what it was. They probably threw all these ingredients in mm -hmm. because some idiot executive at CBS or, or just whoever pitched the show idea was like, oh, I know what's popular this year. Um, we'll just take all of these things and just throw yeah. it into one show, and surely it will be a success, Well, well it was right? basically like you take Fantasy Island, um, you take a little bit of mash, you know, with Sally Kellerman being in it and even, um, and, uh, you know, show, throw in a little of, uh, you know, the Bob Newhart show and, and a talking parrot and you got your show here. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yes. yeah, I would definitely not recommend anybody watch this and I can completely see why this show never made it to air. Um, yeah, totally. It, it's, um. It's not good. But something that I would recommend to people is to go to our Tee Public and buy a t-shirt. Um, new t-shirts will be coming eventually. And um, <laughs> and uh, check out our YouTube as well. We got a YouTube up now. Um, go to all2real2.com for any of that information. Check out our Patreon. Um, share the show with your friends. You know? Um, help promote us, unlike, um, you know, people that claim to be promoters, um, <laughs> that live in, Bang Before, that live in Bangladesh. Yeah. 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 So, God. um, anyways, um, anything else before we end this? Just, um, don't watch these dumb shows. I don't even know why we do it. We, we we're tormenting ourselves every single week. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just try to have a good summer. Um, don't do what we do, basically. Um, yeah. And, um, until next time, folks, just remember what the talking parrot said. Bye bye Thanks for listening mm. to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.